the fundamentals of faith. It is extremely important to go back to the fundamentals. And uh, so open your Bibles to Romans 3.27. In the uh, third chapter of the book of Romans, are you there? In my Bible, everywhere I find the word grace, I've underlined it in red. And um, now in the Baptist church, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, (laughs) even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. Through faith in His blood. Wow. To declare his righteousness or his right standing with God for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law of works? No, but by the law of faith. There are physical laws. There are spiritual laws. There are aeronautical laws. God knew that so birds can fly. But people had to figure out how. (laughs) Well, isn't it amazing that two young men by the name of Orville and Wilbur Wright, I have preached at the Wright Methodist Seminary in Dayton, Ohio. They, Wilbur and Orville, once they got that thing to fly, they, they went to England and they telegraphed their dad. We have an audience with the king. He said, wonderful, don't drink her wine. <laughs> God was involved in that. Yes. So, Laws govern these things. And uh, the fundamentals of faith, the basic fundamentals, you, you have to go back in, in any endeavor. Flying is a discipline. Safety is an attitude. Without being very disciplined at flying, very disciplined with maintenance, very disciplined with all of the the safety situation and recurrent training over and over and over again. That all of these laws have been here since day one because a spirit created all matter. So this is a spirit book. Amen. Now, and of course, Galatians 5, 6 says, faith works by love. Faith is a spiritual force. It is not a mental force. So, 
you can be doing good works. I'm not talking about not, 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 not doing good works. But anyone can do good works, but not by faith. So let's go over here to the book of Hebrews. You know where I'm going. No, you didn't. I'm going to the 10th chapter. <laughs> I was with uh, David Barton. We were doing television right before we started. He said, where do you get a white highlighter? <laughs> I said, what? Where do you get a white highlighter? He looked over there at my Bible and we were right there <laughs> in the book of Hebrews. Because I lived in the book of Hebrews. I still do. I just live in it. And, uh, and this one is so worn out that, and I, you know, I maybe start a new one, but no, 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 man. I have split the pages and, and Scotch taped them back in some places where you can't even. And made so many notes on it. Anyway, verse 35 of the 10th chapter. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. I heard Keith say, that's the payoff. For you have need of patience that after, now that's one of the gifts of the fruit of the Spirit, right? It's not put up with, it's endurance. that after you have done the will of God or the word of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. <clears throat> now the just shall live by faith. Faith is a spiritual force. It is not mental. Believe it in your heart, then say it with your mouth. Number two, faith will not work in an unforgiving heart. Number three, Abraham's blessing cannot be received with Thomas's faith. Number four, faith calls things that be not as though they were. That's where most believers get hung up. When uh, came time, so we came back home. I intended to stay there the whole four years in the seminary and all. Well, May, school was out. In fact, our landlord uh, was a, a lawyer and I, I went to see him to get some paint to repaint the thing. Oh, that place was a mess. Anyway, and I asked him to draw up Kenneth Copeland Evangelistic Association papers in the state of Oklahoma. I intended to stay. So I got up the next morning and uh, we had a very nice little blue table that Gloria had rummaged around in, in junkyards and stuff and, and found it. The top was one piece and the bottom was another. Put the two of them together and antiqued them blue. We had a nice table. <laughs> oh, Lord. So we went in. I, I got up and got dressed, put my suit on, got my Bible and sat down in the front room. I'm just wondering what to do during the summer. And it came up on the inside of me. I'm ready for you now. What? I want you to go back to Fort Worth. The biggest part of your destiny is there. I said, Lord, you know what happened to you in your hometown. I don't want to do that. <laughs> he said, didn't I tell you I'd take care of it? I said, oh, oh, all right, we're on our way. <laughs> but the phone rang. Gloria said, uh, Brother Nichols wants to talk to you. So I answered it. He said, uh, Brother Kenneth, he said, when can you come preach me a meeting? 
I said, well, Brother Nichols, I'd like to say I need to check my schedule, but I don't have any schedule. When do you want me? <laughs> he said, uh, can you come to me? It was a weekend after that or something. I said, yes, sir, I can. Well, we drove that old car to Fort Worth. And uh, that's all I knew was what I learned from Oral Roberts and Brother Hagin. And so I just kind of preached and talked and we got through and he said, I don't think we can close that this weekend. Okay. He said, Let, let's, let's go next week. Well, we went for three weeks. <laughs> we sat out in the car out in front of the church. He said, where are you going from here? I said, brother, um, I don't have any idea. So we agreed. Hilton Sutton called me. When can you come to me? <laughs> I said, when do you want me? He told me. Three days over the weekend. Stayed three weeks. <laughs> well, his dad was there at the close. He said, young man, when can you come to me? <laughs> so I went to Beaumont <laughs> and uh, stayed three weeks and then then after that, he said, I want you to come back every quarter. That's the way it started. One after another. Then I had a meeting in his church. And uh, for he called me there to stay for three weeks. And I heard it in my spirit, this is going to be the best meeting financially you've ever had in your life. Got there, flew. He said, Brother Kenneth couldn't guarantee you $50 if you stayed a month. I said, why? He said, oh, everybody's out with the flu. I said, well, you know what to do. Get your oil bottle and let's go to work. So there were only one man that wouldn't do it. He, he's, I'm not about to. I'm not going to believe I have some. I'm standing there with my Bible in my hand in the hospital. I'm not about to say something I can't feel or believe. And he liked to die and all the rest of them. God, he just got up anyway. He was in the bed for two weeks. He finally showed up. And uh, it just went on just powerfully. So, and Dad Sutton, I mean, the first morning we only had two people. He and his wife and two women. So I just preached like the place is full. That night, we had six. And one got saved, one got filled with the Holy Ghost. And I said, Praise God, we're having a landslide. <laughs> One fellow said, that poor boy don't know the difference between the landslide and the flop. <laughs> well, I had learned to speak by faith. Amen. Amen. And kept it up. Just kept doing it. Just, just kept on, kept on, kept on, kept on. So, oh, Dad Sutton, he, he took the, the, the checks and, of course, they belonged to the ministry, not to us. There was $900 worth of checks at one time. <laughs> and a whole sack full of change. <laughs> so I got home. Now, I was driving that old car and I was listening to tapes. I'm listening this night and day. And I said, Lord, now listen to what he said. I said, you can keep this old car together. I'm driving along there about 40 miles an hour. I said, you can keep this old car together 
at 50, 60 miles an hour, just as came, same as you can at any other speed. He rose up in me and said, that's right. As long as you stay at the speed limit or less, that's the speed limit. Limit. <laughs> he said, you get out above that speed limit, you're out of my hands. Amen. He said, when you got your driver's license, you promised to obey the speed laws. Amen. And I realized what I'd like to kill everybody with before. Anyway, got home, this whole sack full of money. And I took the other out and I said, now, Gloria, this is for your birthday. She said, come on. Well, I was tired. I, I didn't want to go anywhere. She said, come on. So we, and we got in the car and went to the, she said, go to that store. So I went there. So we walked in this store. She walked just right straight to this bright red purse and a bright red pair of high heel shoes and <laughs> set them up there on the counter and just poured that whole sack full of change out. <laughs> and these two women started counting that out. I don't remember how much it was. And God done, we had about 55 cents left. She said, well, I broke in. Gloria said, no, you didn't. There's more where that came from. Amen. Got her pretty red shoes. We were in her closet the other night and I said, Gloria, those old red shoes, you remember those? She said they had it. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's more where that came from. We were learning one step at a time. And so the time we spent in Tulsa was incalculable. Little did we know that we had the anointing of two families. And I began to see in the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians the supply that of every joint, the anointing of every joint. And I began to see that the anointing of Kenneth Hagin and the anointing of Oral Roberts that that was the reason we were in Tulsa in the first place. And our relationship there with those two powerhouses of faith. Brother Roberts said to me one time, he, he had a way of expressing himself. He said, people that don't live by faith He said, they, they can't figure out the puzzle. He looked me in the, face, in the face. He said, you always know there's a key issue to everything. Amen. He said, if your finances get bottled up, you pray in the spirit until the Lord reveals you the key issue." And he said, when you find that key issue, you fix it, whatever it is, and it'll, it'll turn your finances loose. Well, not long after that, I went to Arkansas and I was praying up there and I said, Lord, I don't understand this. I, I, our, our finances are all messed up. I remember what he said. I, I said, I, 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 I don't know what the key issue to this is. He said, well, I tried to give it to you once before and you've thought about it and just did away with it. I said, what? You're not tithing the ministry. <laughs> what? Then I remembered, I'd heard Jimmy Swaggart say something about that. And I just kind of passed it off. He said, that's the reason you're a million behind in your ministry right now. And I said, but you don't, he said, don't tell me that all of it belongs to me. 
He said, do government employee pay taxes? I said, yes. He said, well, doesn't it all belong to the government anyway? I said, all oh, right, okay, I said. <laughs> so I said, we'll do it. And, and I just got over on my face, repented. And I said, consider it done. Amen. I got home and I just announced to everybody, we are going to, we're going to tie this ministry. We're going to tie the church. We're going to tie the whole thing. We'll sow it into other ministries. We'll do whatever God says do with it. I want you to know that million dollars just came just, just flying in there. Praise God. It changed this whole operation. The faith of God. Faith is a spiritual force. And when you know what it is, and you know where it comes from. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know that. Amen. So you know what it is and you know where it comes from. Now you have arrived at a place from there on its training. I'm Roxanne Alexander, and I'm from Marble Falls, Texas. I'm a pastor, um, a church there in Marble Falls, and um, I've been a pastor for about 20 years. Well, um, actually, I didn't intend to go into the ministry, but uh, in about 1987, I, um, my life had fallen apart. Things were not good. Both of my parents had died and just was at a loss um, for what to do with my life. And I was a Christian. And so I prayed and uh, asked the Lord to please help me. And uh, he reminded me of one thing. He said, you do know how to pray. You know how to pray in the Spirit. It's one thing that I, I did know. So I prayed and the next day I was watching television and there was this man on TV with piercing blue eyes. And he was preaching, just telling us how good God was. And I was so thrilled about hearing how good God was because I was raised in a place where we didn't uh, hear that. We heard, uh, you know, God's gonna get you or we heard He'll teach you a lesson by hurting you. Um, you know, he, he basically kills people, things like that. And so we didn't know anything about God being good. I was so enthralled, I asked my business partner to come with me and watch uh, uh, Brother Copeland on TV. And that year, just a few months later, I think that was April, that year we actually went out to the Believers Convention in California. And um, wow, we were hooked. And you know, we understood what it meant to be totally immersed that, in that first meeting. So we showed up at the second meeting, which was the Southwest Believers uh, Convention. And we have been to every one of those since then. We're on what, maybe 33 or something like that. That's how I became a minister. I, I was watching Brother Copeland and I just said, man, I have to tell people about this. And so people began to gather in my living room and I started teaching whatever Brother Copeland said, I just started teaching. And um, so people gathered and they wanted to know. And then uh, one day someone kind of said, hey, uh, don't you think you're called to the ministry? Well, okay, so, you know, not being raised in a place where uh, women did that. But then I saw uh, Miss Gloria and what she did and I uh, was encouraged and, and so I went into the ministry and became an assistant pastor and then eventually the senior pastor in Marble Falls. The faith message changed my life forever. When the CX team formed and we were uh, uh, accumulating funds, I say we because I'm a partner, uh, accumulating funds for that airplane, the Citation 10. Uh, my business partner and I had a, had a vehicle and we decided um, to sell the vehicle and give the money to uh, the plane, for the plane. And so we did. And from that point on, which was some years ago, we have driven debt-free vehicles, three trucks, five Lexuses, and have never had a payment on any of them. It's great to be a partner. It's great. You sow a seed into good ground and you get a good harvest. I really feel in my heart that um, 
As far as ministry, part of my ministry is being a partner with Brother Copeland. It's part of my life. It's not just something on the sideline. I am a true partner with KCM. And I feel like anything they do, anywhere they go, I'm a part of that. As a believer, you already meet all the qualifications to being an overcomer. If you're feeling beat down in any area, professionally, socially, physically, or mentally, faith is the key to stepping over into the victory side. In the audio series, Faith, How It Works, Kenneth Copeland's teachings can help you grasp God's faith formula that is found in the Word of God. Get your questions answered through this important foundational teaching. What is faith and where does it come from? Who has faith? How do you get more faith? How can faith help you live a better life? No weapon of the enemy is a match for faith released. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God and speaking the Word releases faith. Take the first steps toward living a God-pleasing life full of love, hope, and victory by receiving this impactful teaching into your heart today. Learn how to use the world overcoming faith God has given you. The weapons of the enemy are no match for faith when it's released. Request your free copy of Kenneth Copeland's MP3 series, Faith, How It Works, on kcm.org slash TV special, or when you call 800-600-7395. Offer good for 60 days. If you are outside the United States, shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Hello, I'm Larry Warren. The Bible promises that we can live a life of victory through faith. Faith is a powerful spiritual force that connects us to our covenant promises with God. Brother Copeland has been teaching us that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law becoming a curse for us. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. When you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, He gave you His victory over all the curse. This week, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have a free teaching they want to give you called Faith How It Works. You can develop this mountain-moving, world-overcoming faith that God has said you could have to be successful in everything He's called you to do. Request your free teaching today on KCM.org. We'll see you again tomorrow. This is Brother Larry reminding you God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want to thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. To learn more about Kenneth Copeland Ministries and how we can help you grow in faith, check out our website for free content and resources available to you on kcm.org.